everyone, it's Janie here. I'm here to introduce you to the video for part 10 of the Sunshine and Showers blanket, which I have in front of me here. And it's the month where we're going to do these little hearts in honour of Valentine's Day. If I hold those up to the screen, they're so pretty, aren't they? Um, and actually really quite straightforward, just done with quite simple stitches. Um, and they are on the background of... Um, before you do the hearts, you do these little bits that I designed to make them look like stems of flowers beginning to poke through the ground in February. So it's a really lovely time of year, isn't it, when we start to see little shoots of spring coming in the garden. And of course, with Valentine's Day also on the horizon, I thought it was a good time to add in hearts. So I hope you'll stick with this video where Emma is going to show you how to work this month's piece of the design and i hope you enjoy it welcome to part 10 um hearts i couldn't wait for this one couldn't wait um hearts and these lovely uh sort of shoots coming through the ground that jane has explained to us so they look beautiful lovely and easy to make so we'll bust all the mystique around them <laughs> Don't tell anybody, tell them they were awfully complicated. Um, the hearts, you will be familiar with the technique because they are made using stitches that are crocheted together. Um, you might not have encountered, I'll just show you from the side, you can see these sort of raised bars between the, um, the little shoots. You might not have encountered these yet because these stitches are front post and back post trebles. Now don't worry about that, all it is, normal treble stitch, it's just where you position your hook before you make it. So we'll cover that when we get to it. I just want to remind you that these videos are not intended to replace the pattern. You won't be able to work them without the pattern. You've got all your stitch counts and everything in there. So if you haven't got it yet, I've put a link in the um, video notes so you can click on that and and find that information no problem so let's make a start right we're starting on row 60 I'm just undoing my last stitch to the point where I can do our regular kind of color change um, we're going to be working if you're working the, uh, the original colorway we're going to be working with turquoise here um, we're on a right side row I can tell because my pumpkins <laughs> are this side up. I'm just going to um, pull that stitch back to the point where there is two, two little loops left. Um, and we're gonna be using a four and a half millimeter hook for this row. Now we do switch a bit between hooks on this row. So just pay attention, pay co close attention to, um, to your notes at the beginning of each row, just to make sure you don't miss those. Right, so I've got back to the point where there are two loops on the hook and I'm going to pull through with turquoise okay now this is just a normal double crochet row so there's not anything very um, difficult to show you but maybe just a reminder that you could crochet over the ends if you like on this row because it is just simply uh, a straightforward double crochet row I'm just going to take the grape yarn i don't know if you saw what i did there take the grape yarn and pass it behind so that if i crochet over that one it sits neatly behind and it's not sort of trailing over the top so i'm just going to be putting one double crochet have i done my turning chain yes one double crochet in every stitch to the end and what i'm doing you can see i'm just crocheting over these ends as i go and that just is going to, oops, I've caught that in. That's just going to save me a couple of ends to sew in, which is always a bonus, isn't it? So all I'm doing there is I'm putting my hook through the stitch, under those ends, and off I go. And I'll do that for maybe eight or so stitches. Um, and then I can trim those ends off. And they're done and taken care of. So I shall do that, and I shall see you at the end there's not much to tell you on the next one either except to say get ready with your khaki because we're going to change straight away to khaki yarn okay so coming up to the last few stitches and i'm going to be changing the yarn color to khaki so i've got khaki waiting in the wings pull through keep the two loops on the hook find the end 
and just pull through with car key. We're staying on the four and a half millimeter hook um, because we're going to do another row of double crochet. So I'm just going to turn the work. Now, um, we can still sew, um, sew, no, weave in ends here, um, but because we're, we've got the wrong side facing us now, we sort of need the ends to be uh, caught in this way. So it's not a trouble. I'll just remind you, I think we've done this before, but I'll just remind you in case you need it of how we do it. So I'm going to make one chain, my turning chain, and I'm going to um, be putting one double crochet in every stitch across. Don't forget with the doubles, we start right at the base of that turning chain. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under those two ends and then through my stitch. So I'm picking up um, and grabbing them and sort of holding them in place. So I'll show you again, there's those two ends. You might want to just do one at a time, but I'm doing two and my hook has gone under them through the next stitch. I haven't missed one, have I? Let me double check. No, under the two ends, through the next stitch, and I finish my double crochet, under, through the next stitch, and off I go. Now what I'll do is I'll just give these ends a little pull, not too tight, just to make sure they're sitting flat behind there. And again, I'll do this for sort of half a dozen stitches or eight stitches or something, just so they're nicely, um, nice and neatly caught in and, and sort of uh, secure. So again, all the way across with the double crochet, uh, do not cut or anything at the end because we're going to do our next row with khaki as well. So I'll just do another couple of holding in those ends. Give them a snip. It's lovely when there's double crochet rows because you know you can take care of a couple of ends. Give them a snip and I'll carry on to the end. So I'll see you at the end. Right, I'm at the end of um, this row and I'm not changing yarn colour, so I've completed the last stitch. And I'm going to turn the work and we are actually now going to um, change hook coming down a size to the four millimeter. Okay, put that through so that the yarn is at the back and let's do it properly. Right. Okay, so we're on our four millimeter hook and what we're now gonna do is we're sort of doing the setup row for um, our lovely, where are they? Our lovely little leaves poking through the ground so it's really important to get this one right so take some time to get this right because it acts as the template for for the following rows um very very neatly right so we're going to start with three chain one two and three and that is going to count as our first treble um we're not going to put a treble into the base we're going to put one treble into the next stitch along all right, because that first three chain counts as our first treble. So nothing going into the base. Our first treble goes into the next stitch along. Right, we're going to miss two stitches, one, two, and we're going to put two treble into the next one along. So miss one, miss two, our two trebles come into here. One, two, into here. One and two. And we're going to put one chain and then two trebles into the same stitch and that will create those little sort of open leaves. You know what they look like that when you when you see um, those, that little first pair of leaves coming and poking through the ground when you've planted a seed or something. So there we go. That's the first one. You can see there's a little chain space between them. Okay, we're gonna miss two stitches again, one and two, and we're gonna put one treble into the next stitch along. And this is going to be where we create those lovely sort of um, three, well, this is 3D, isn't it? Those lovely posts that pop forward a bit. So we've missed our two stitches and we've put our treble in there. We're gonna miss two stitches again, one, two, and put two into this one and create our next little seedling. Seedling, that's the word, isn't it? Little seedling. Two in there, one chain, and two in there again. And that's our pattern going over. All right. And miss two, one into the next stitch. 
all the way along. Miss two, seedling. <laughs> I'm going to just say seedling and we know what we mean. We mean two treble, one chain, two treble. That is our pattern all the way along until we get to the end. And I will show you what's a little bit different there. But this is not too taxing, is it? You can manage this. I will see you at the end. Right, I'm now on my last repeat. So I'm just doing my last seedling. So that's two treble. So I'm just going to adjust the piece. It's getting long now, so it's put, wanting to pull off the off the desk. So, um, sorry, two treble, one chain, two treble, and we finish that repeat by missing two stitches, one, two, and putting a treble into the next one, and that very neatly will leave you with one stitch available, and you're just going to put one treble into that one. But don't complete the stitch because you're going to change yarn shade to meadow. I'll do that in a moment, but let's just have a little look at what we've created. We have created these little seedlings. They will become more pronounced as seedlings as we work into that um, chain that we've made, that centre chain into each one. But already a lovely shape, isn't it? So we've got our seedlings and we've got the all important treble sitting between them. They're going to become really, really important as we work the next rows because those are the posts that are going to uh, sort of form the foundation of those um these you can see these sort of raised posts going through very exciting let's see how we make those right we're changing yarn shade to um meadow on the last pull through and we're still on the four millimeter hook i am going to turn the work and i'm not going to bother myself with trying to um, weave in ends or anything because we're on longer stitches here it doesn't work quite so well so we'll just get ready to go now let's just have a little chat about working around the posts of stitches um, what does that mean well in this case we're going to be working around the post of the treble stitch so if we look at and it's going to be those standalone stitches we made so if we look at our We've got our seedlings either side of this treble post or this treble stitch, I'm sorry. And normally we would expect to put our hook through the V at the top of the stitch and make our stitch in there. What we're actually going to do is work around that post. And all it means, we'll be starting with a um, back post treble. All it means is I'm going to bring my hook from the back of the work. Do you see it's just to the right there of the post? And then I'm going to put it back through to the back of the work. And if I turn it over, you will see that the post of the stitch is sitting across the top of my hook. And that will be the starting position of where we make our treble. All right. So that is basically what um, crocheting around a post looks like. You can go the other way as well, where you go in from the front, round the back and up through the front again and you will see the post of the stitch, stitch sitting across the front of the hook like so um we will work both of those stitches in alternating rows um, and you'll see why as as it happens so let's make a start and just do it in practice rather than sort of talking about it so as before i'm going to be starting with um three chain which will count as the treble one two and three and we're going to go straight into one of those uh back post treble stitches so i'll bring that up to the camera you can see my treble here we're going to be working around that particular post and we're working a treble so i have to start with the yarn around the hook as usual and i'm going to bring my hook from the back of the work just sitting there to the right of the of the treble post it's coming through and now I'm going to go across the top of that post and back through the work to the left through the left hand side of it so if I turn it over you will see the post of that treble is sitting across my hook all right so the hook is just going right across the front of it so I'm going to pull through all the way through both of those uh, sort of gaps where I put the hook so I've now got the three loops on the hook and just complete my treble so yarn over through two yarn over through two 
Now, from the front, you cannot, well, in fact, this is the back of the work, but what I mean is from the side where we're looking at, you can't see very much looking very different. But if, again, if I just fold that down, not terribly neat to start with, but you will see it's sort of captured that, um, that post and continued it up. It's very difficult to see on the first one, so let's do a few more and you'll be able to see it much easier. Okay, so that was our first... Um, back post treble um, we're going to miss two stitches and we're going to put two trebles into that chain space all right to make our next uh, seedling so two trebles in here and we're going to make seedlings in the same way which is comforting isn't it when we're learning a new stitch so we're going to do our two treble one chain two treble and it will just build on those lovely seedlings. So it will look like nice little neat rows, maybe a veggie patch or something um, coming to life after the winter. So we've done our two trebles, one chain, two treble, and there is our seedling. Now we're going to repeat the um, uh, treble round the post. And let's just remind ourselves how that works. So set up for our treble in the normal way, which is yarn around the hook. I'm coming from the back of the work. And I'm going to come in to the right of that treble post. So coming from the back of the work, coming through the work, I'm going to go across the top of the treble and back to the back of the work to the left of the post. Pull up my loop, come back all the way through where I've just been and complete my treble. OK, and we'll have a look at the back. And you can see... Can you see what I mean now? It's sort of continuing that post. It will just make a really long post as if there's no interruption happening there at all. Much easier to see in real life because it sort of stands proud and you'll see exactly the effect that is being given there. So I'm going to work all the way along the row like this. So making a seedling into the, the gap we've made with the chain in our seedling before. You can see why I said it's um, important to get this row right because all those little seedlings are gonna stack on top of each other nice and neatly. And then we're just working this new stitch, this back post treble. So yarn is around the hook ready. I'm coming in from the back to the right of the stitch. I'm going across the post and I'm going back down to the left of the stitch, pulling through and finishing my treble in the normal way all right feel free to rewind and watch that again i'm going to make my way along to the end and we can have a look at the the full effect when we get there all right here we go here's our last seedling and we're going to make um, the last back post treble oops around that penultimate stitch okay and then on our very last stitch we're going to just put a treble into the third of that starting chain it's easier said than done as usual i usually struggle with this and now i'm struggling with it in full vision of you, dear viewer. <laughs> Come on, Emma. There we go. Hooray. Let's put the yarn a little. Right, I'm not going to finish that stitch because we're changing to lime. But let's just take that out for now and turn the work because this is the, this is the right side and this is the side we want the effect to be achieved on. If I give them all a little pull up, you can see what's happening. Better if I just sort of turn it to the side, you can see that these are starting to raise up. It will become more visible on the camera as we put more rows on, but you will see that straight away when you're looking at that. It's a lovely, um, a lovely technique. It is used a lot on sort of overlay crochet. If you've seen the really elaborate mandalas and stuff, they use this quite a lot and it's very effective because it sort of gives the impression that those stitches particularly if you do it in the same colour, gives the impression that those stitches are just one long continuous stitch, which is fantastic. So there we go, our second row of seedlings. We're going to continue that. Actually, I'm going to leave mine um, turned this way because we've got to turn anyway. And um, we're going on to lime. 
Right, so I've just bent that corner back and I'm going to pull my, um, make sure I've got it the right way around. I'm going to pull the lime end through and put it back that way and we've magically turned. Now, we are going to, I'm sorry, I've just folded the work up a bit because like I said, it keeps wanting to pull off the table there, which is awkward and, and it's also affecting my tension making it a bit tighter um so i had to fold that up there so if you keep getting glimpses of pumpkins just treat it as a bonus because we all love those don't we right so we're going to do the same again we're going to build another row of seedlings but this time we're going to be working a front post treble okay it works in almost the same way it's just rather than coming from the back we're going to go through the front let me show you what i mean so we'll start with the three treble no sorry we won't we'll start with the three chain to pretend that's our first treble or count as our first treble and we're going straight into this front post treble um, around you can see our little posts that we're creating so yarn around the hook and rather than coming from the back as we did before we're going to go in through the front round the back and back through the front. So you can see the difference. You can actually see um, the post going around, or sorry, going across the top of your hook there. So pull up a loop and continue to complete your treble in the normal way. And you will see straight away that that post is continuing upwards, almost a continuous post. Right, so same again, then off we go and we're going to do our seedlings. And I'll just show you one more front post treble. And then I think you'll know where you're going after that. So seedling. I'm so glad I remembered the word seedling. <laughs> it's made a whole difference. Right, ready for our front post treble. So yarn around the hook, going into the right of the post from the front to the back, going behind the post and coming back up from the back to the front. So the post is sitting across the front of the hook. I'm gonna be honest with you, with these, I always have to look these up. I can never remember which is which. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sure that sounds absolutely bonkers, but that is the truth of it. I always have to double check. Okay, so now we know what we're doing here, front post treble. We've got our normal repeat and we can work along quite happily. So I shall do that and see you at the end. Okay, just finishing the last seedling. And we're going to do the last um, front post treble. So yarn over through the front, round the back and back out through the front. And same as before. Oh dear. <laughs> Put a treble into the top of that three chain, which I'm always so slick and impressive at, aren't I? Hold on. Oh goodness. There we go. Right, and again, I'll leave it undone because we're going to change the yarn to the cream. But look what's happening, isn't it? Lovely. You can see from the side, those lovely posts um, and those stitches. If I give them a little pull like that, they just are these nice posts that continue upward in a nice straight line. Okay, so we've got our three little rows of seedlings. We're going to be changing now to the cream yarn, which you know what that means. That means the hearts aren't far away. So pull through with the cream in the normal way and turn the work. Right, the cream row is actually identical to the row that we made with meadow. And I'll show you what I mean. Once you once we get going, you'll go, oh, yes, I remember. So three chain to begin with. That's our first treble. And straight into a back post treble. So yarn around the hook, coming from the back of the work to the front, going across the top of the post and going back down to the back and completing our treble in the normal way. And then we're gonna make the seedlings in the normal way. So um, two treble into the chain space in the middle of the seedling from the previous row. And I'll just show you again, we're gonna do um, that back post treble again. So we come from the back Yarn around the hook, come from the back, over the top of the post, 
back through to the back and complete our treble stitch in the normal way. So you see what I mean? It's a very familiar row and you should be very used to it by now. It's the fourth sort of repeat of this. So I'll see you at the end. Right, okay, I'm on my last back post treble again. And the same again, we're going to put a treble into the top of the um, three chain at the beginning. or well, that was made at the beginning. Now we're not gonna make any color changes on this one. So I'm gonna finish the stitch and turn the work and we can have a little look at it from the front. Lovely, so again, we've just extended the little rows of our seedlings and we've extended those um, nice treble stitches in between them um, using those brilliant front and back post trebles so I really love that technique and um, takes a little while just a very little while to get your head around it and then you know it's yet another um, sort of textural technique you can create with crochet um, and it's just so lovely, isn't it, to discover new stitches all the time and, and sort of debunk some of the, perhaps some of the things that you've seen and thought, oh, no, that's very tricky. You can see that it really isn't. Right, we are now ready, finally, to start those hearts. And um, we're keeping the cream going, but we're going to introduce uh, raspberry as well for the heart. So we're actually going to be working two colours at once across this row. And don't worry, because we've done it before with pumpkins but I'll just show you on the back you can see um, that yarns are being carried between the hearts you've got the cream and the raspberry being carried between hearts in the in um you know in a fairly neat way on the back there none too visible from the front um so let's look at it together as we go we're going to be changing colors within a row which means we're still the same sort of thing which is to say um, the new colour gets introduced on the last pull through of the stitch, but it's just where that happens. It's a little bit different when you're working colour changes within a row. So we'll go through it together. Nothing to worry about too much. Right, so we're on row 66. We're still on our four millimetre hook and we're going to make a start by um, working three chain. One, two and three one treble into the next stitch so we're leaving behind the um front and back post trebles just putting one treble into that next stitch which sits at the top of those lovely sort of raised treble stitches right what we're now going to do is we're going to treble two together over these next two stitches and the next two stitches are this right hand leaf of the seedling and we've got quite a lot going on here because not only are we trebling two together we're actually going to be changing yarn shade to raspberry on the last pull through so let's just break that down and do that nice and slowly so we know what's going on we've already done trebling two together but as a reminder i will walk you all the way through it all right so we're going to start with the yarn around the hook and put our hook through the first of the two stitches we're trebling together pull the loop up as normal yarn over and through two now ordinarily we'd yarn over and pull through those last two loops wouldn't we to finish the stitch but we're not going to do that we're going to leave it there and start our next treble so yarn around the hook again sorry just hit my head on on the light helpfully yarn over go through the next stitch pull up a loop and we've now got four loops on the hook yarn over and through two right now at this point we're going to yarn over and pull through all of those three loops and that will complete the trebling two together it will basically merge two stitches into one once we do that but because we are um, going to be working our heart now I'm going to pull through in the raspberry yarn all right so you can see what I mean there's quite a lot going on there but it's okay it's okay once you sort of break it down do it slowly um, and it will become logical by the time you get a few repeats in on your on your row okay so we've now got we've finished just for the moment with the cream so I'm just going to move that to the back move that out of the way and I'm now set up ready to start whatever I want to do with the raspberry yarn 
okay and what we're going to do with the raspberry is we're actually going to do some more trebling together and this time we're going to treble three together in that uh, chain space so just what we've just done but three stitches and all going into one place so let's have a look at that and again we'll be changing our yarn shade back all right so let's break it down again so i'll start with my first of the three trebles so yarn around the hook into the chain space pull up my loop yarn over through two so that would be where i would now yarn over and pull through two if i was doing a normal treble but i'm not doing that so i will leave that loop on the hook and start treble number two of three so yarn around the hook going straight back through where i've just been pull up a loop yarn over through two not completing the stitch so i've now got three raspberry loops on the hook okay ready for the third and final treble yarn over straight back through the uh, chain space pull up a loop yarn over through two and i'm left now with four loops on the hook and at this point i need to pull through all of them to create that treble three together and rather than pull through with the raspberry i'm going to drop that and i'm going to pick up wherever you are pick up the cream from behind and pull through with that instead all right so what happens when you do that if i take my hook out briefly when you do that if you look the actual stitches when you make them lean to the left so if i pull that stitch down to the left you'll see that the raspberry sits at the top of the raspberry stitches where it needs to be if i'd have finished that stitch with um if i'd have finished this stitch with raspberry this little loop that I'm holding here to the left would be with would be raspberry and it would continue over the top of the white and not look right. So that's why you do it like that. Um, it just gives you a nice, neat pattern. OK, and we all want a nice, neat heart, don't we? Right. So that is our trebling three together for the first side of the heart. And I'm back in with cream and I'm going to do just one normal treble into the same space so the same space where that trebling three together is one normal treble in cream nice and easy except i'm going to drop the cream again on the last pull through and go back to raspberry all right because i need to complete the second side of the heart just give that all a little tighten up all right, I'm going to do the same thing again, which is the trebling three together with the raspberry changing to cream on the last pull through. So let's do that again together. So yarn around the hook into the chain space, yarn over, pull through two. That's one. Yarn around the hook into the chain space, pull up a loop, yarn over through two, three loops on the hook. Yarn around the hook into the chain space, pull up a loop yarn over through two and I've got four loops on the hook that's where I'm going to drop raspberry and pick up cream and pull through all four right now not looking very heart like yet but it will trust me as you get more um as you get more stitches on those turn into lovely lovely hearts right so that is is that our that's not the end of our repeat we're now going to do um that cream trebling two together over two stitches on this side of the white seedling okay so that what we did at the beginning we're going to do here and that will sort of square off that gap very cleverly so let's do it together so yarn over go into the first of those two stitches pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and again, yarn over, go into the second of those two stitches, pull up a loop, yarn over, and we've now got three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. So there's no yarn, there's no colour change there. Okay, there is no colour change there. And that, in fact, was the edge, end of our repeat. So it's a complicated one. I will whiz through a second um, repeat 
but I won't break it down quite so slowly. We'll just do a second repeat together. Obviously, you can rewind if you need to. Right, so we're starting in um, with a treble into the top of this post. So normal treble, there we go. And now we're going to treble two together in cream across these two stitches, changing to raspberry on the last pull through. Drop that, pick that up. Oh, raspberry, there we go. Just carrying across at the back. Don't pull it too tight. Just carry across at the back. Right, trebling three together into the chain space. Um, one. Changing to cream. I'm <laughs> getting very, very caught up with all these yarns. Changing to cream on the last pull through. So that was one. There's two. There's three. Leaves me with four loops on the hook. Pick up cream and go through all four. Just doing one treble in the middle. Again, back into that chain space. Dropping that, pulling through with raspberry on the last pull through. That's the middle of our heart. And trebling three together in the same place with raspberry again. Here we go. One, two, Don't complete each stitch. Two, three. So I've got four raspberry loops on the hook. I will drop raspberry. I will pick up cream and pull through. Okay, there's heart number two coming into coming into being. Right, got a little bit of work now with the cream to finish off this repeat. So trebling two together over the next two stitches. So it's on the second side of the seedling, going into the first stitch, keep this, keep the stitch incomplete, going into the second stitch, three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through. And that is our second repeat of that pattern. There is a lot, I know there is a lot. So this is where your written pattern is absolutely essential. Follow it line by line. If you need to write, I've seen this done so many times, if you need to write out the instructions for this row, breaking them down step by step, do that and tick them off until you're used to it. It is absolutely brilliant way of working. Loads of people do it like that. I've done it like that myself plenty of times. So that's a little tip as well. If this is a, a lot to remember, break it down step by step and it will soon go in. Um, you've got a fair few repeats to do. By the time you get to the end, you'll be flying through it so i'm going to get across to the end myself and we'll have a chat when we get there well i just wanted to stop i've got a couple more hearts to do i just wanted to stop a little way from the end and have a little look at the back of the work so you can see the um yarns being carried across and i'll just give you um a little tip as to how it's worked best for me um you will find your way but how it's worked best for me um when i have to when I've finished with a colour and need to change to the next colour, um, let me show you what I do with the yarn. So I'm, at the moment, I'm now working with raspberry. I've got cream held or cream just sitting over to the right. And I'm working with raspberry, so that's sitting to my left. So I'll just make the first side of the heart. So we're trebling three raspberry stitches together so I've now got a pull through in cream I'm working here with raspberry and what I'm going to do is drop raspberry pass it to the right I'm doing big sort of dramatic um exaggerated movements it won't it doesn't look like this in real life but um it passes to the right raspberry underneath the cream which is coming to the left and over the top so when you're doing that, it will be a small movement, but I just did a big exaggerated movement there so you could sort of see what's happening. So let's do it again. I'm now just going to do my one treble in cream. And again, I've got to change yarn. So I'm dropping cream and passing it to the right and underneath raspberry, picking up raspberry and completing the stitch. So the working, the yarn you're about to work with um, comes to the left and the yarn that you're not working with goes to the right and it goes 
um, underneath. So the working yarn you're about to work with comes over the top and to the left and the yarn you're dropping goes underneath and to the right. All right, sorry about that. Might have been a bit handy a little tiny bit earlier on, but that that is how I work it and it seems to work okay. So we're nearly at the end and I will see you in a moment. Okay, so just finishing the last of the heart, pulling through and I'm trebling two together in the cream. I've got two stitches left. I'm going to just make sure you, you, you pull those apart if they get close together. Two stitches left, so I'm going to pop a treble in the top of that one and a treble. Whoops. <laughs> Can cut that in a minute treble into the to the top of the three chain and complete it we're not changing yarn color i'm just going to snip the raspberry and let that go because it's a tangled mess so do actually if i just bring this up you'll see oh can you see yes can you see how the yarn is twisting around itself i've got a much shorter um row than you so do take some time just to um unwind those every so often else it gets very tight and very uh muddled your yarns will get very tight and very muddled okay so we've got this lovely little row of hearts complete i love them very very sweet you can give them a sort of pull about and um heart shape them up a bit but they will come into their own as you complete them we're going to put a couple more rows across the top to finish them off um, and we're continuing to work with cream, but we're going to turn and work our next row on the back, on the reverse side or wrong side. Um, we're going to work with the four and a half millimeter hook. So just pay attention to hook changes, as I said at the beginning. Right, I've turned my work. I've got my four and a half millimeter hook and I'm ready to go. I'm going to make one chain. That isn't counting as my first um, first stitch and we're going to start with three double crochet into the next stitches so one two and three that first stitch goes right into the base of the um, chain the turning chain so that's number one number two and number three we're now at a raspberry stitch and we're going to miss that stitch and we're actually going to hop across to the next cream stitch so a lovely sort of map for us and we're going to put three stitches in there three double crochet one two and three and we're going to miss the raspberry stitch again and put one double crochet into each of the next three stitches so really all we're doing as you can see is just working the cream yarn into the cream stitches whenever we get to a raspberry we're giving it a skip okay so if things have worked out in terms of your color changes from the row before you should find that all you're doing is working into cream stitches okay you're going to putting um three between each heart and then three in the center of it and all of those stitches should be falling into cream stitches um providing you know you've done the pull throughs in the right places from the row before and i'm saying this as somebody who had to go back and redo it so um you'll soon know like i said maybe that little trick of or that tip of writing out the more complicated rows into easier to remember parts that works well for me um because it then makes this next row super easy because you've got this little, like I said, this kind of colour map of where things have to go. So I'm just remembering three and three and I'm going to work all the way across like that. Right, I'm on the last three in the middle of the heart. Every time I do that, every time I say that to you, I do mess it up. It's a thing, isn't it? Sorry. Right, and I've now got three cream stitches left. The last one is going to fall into the top of the chains one two and the third is going to go into the top of that those three chain and three and we're going to turn the work we're going to stick with cream for one more row and you can see already that that's just sort of um encapsulated those hearts nicely really finished them off and they're starting to have the nice little sort of frame around them and really looking 
very sweet indeed just in time for valentine's day or galentine's day if you prefer right so one chain to turn and then on this next row which is row 67 we're just going to do a nice relaxing row of double crochet isn't it lovely when you've sort of taxed your brain a little bit to have a couple of nice relaxing rows and here we are can't get more relaxing than a nice row of cream double crochet start to finish nothing exciting here to worry about until you get to the end where we're going to be uh, changing yarn shade to petrol so see you at the end last couple of stitches and i'm going to pull through with petrol on the very last stitch cut the cream turn the work and again i'm now working um, another lovely row of double crochet on the wrong side so i'm going to catch those tails in as i work it from the wrong side so i've made my turning chain i'm going to go under those two ends and just make one double crochet we're finishing off with another gentle row of double crochet so catching the ends in as i go it's a treat because i have actually been very good and sewing the ends in as i've gone on this one sort of and you've seen video evidence so i'll just catch these in and we'll get to the end and have a look at our finished part 10 together here we are then, last three stitches of part 10 of our lovely Sunshine and Showers project. But I'm going to just snip my yarn and pull it through for now. You can put that stitch on a stitch marker, obviously. And let's see. Right then, how beautiful. We've got um, seedlings or, or shoots coming through in our little rows i like to think of them as a my dad's allotment all very neat and lined up and we've learned these wonderful front and back post trebles to create these raised bars between them and the star of the show really are these beautiful hearts that we've made carrying our two colors across like absolute experts and encasing them in their own little uh, frames of cream so really really loved this part i've so looked forward to this i say this every time don't i but um there's nothing quite like hearts in crochet to make you smile so i really hope you've enjoyed this thanks for sticking with us and um see you in part 11